this room. What On my it? own visit to Hogwarts, I was given a personal tour of Gryffindor's common room, courtesy of the young actor who plays Ron Weasley, 13-year-old Rupert Grint. This is the Gryffindor common room. It's where we do a lot of planning and we just hang out here. Right, so this is one of the four dorm areas yeah. for the Hogwarts school. Mm -hmm. And who's your little friend here? This oh, is, this is Scabbers. Scabbers. Yeah. Even Ron's pet rat, Scabbers, made a rare cameo appearance. Of course, that's just a stage name. His real name is Mosh Pit. Now, do they have a stunt rat, or is this the only one? Yeah, I think so. so they have a few rats yeah. in case this one gets tired, wants to take mm. a break. Does he have his own trailer, and what comes <laughs> yeah. to be in makeup, and <laughs> not really? Yeah. <laughs> Ask anyone in showbiz, there's an unwritten Hollywood rule about things to avoid. Animals, special effects, and kids. Come on now, hurry. The Harry Potter movie's got them all, and in droves. But if there's any proven formula for success in the movie business, you might say these filmmakers are on the right track. After all, the cast is top drawer. That's Dame Maggie Smith as McGonagall and Richard Harris as Dumbledore. My granddaughter called me and said, Papa, she said, if you don't play Dumbledore, I will never speak to you again. The film's visual effects supervisor won the Oscar for Titanic. And hear that score? the unmistakable sound of composer John Williams. No corners cut here. Industry insiders say the movie may have cost more than $125 million to make. For that kind of money, it better be, well, magic. There's no such thing as magic. And young Potter aficionados can be very demanding. At first, I really, really was positive I wasn't going to see it because um, I have my own vision of the book in my head and I might go see it. The only problem now is the kids can act. Come up Director Chris Columbus thought long and hard about that problem. Okay. How did you feel about an all British cast? Was that something you felt strongly about? Oh, I was adamant about that. I said, if we want if we want to please the fans, if we want to make this movie the way it should be made, it has to be an all British cast. Right down to not almost non speaking roles except for my children who have cameo appearances. But. <laughs> who says nepotism's not alive and well in the movie business? And no dummy, Columbus admits he took suggestions from Joe Rowling for casting adult parts like the gentle giant Hagrid, played by Robbie Coltrane. You're a wizard, Harry. And the sleazy Professor Snape, played by Alan Rickman. Fame isn't everything. But Columbus knew the film's success would ultimately ride on the talents of its kids especially that tenacious trio. She needs to sort out her priorities. Rupert Grant heard about the auditions on TV and wasted no time. So when I was really eager, I had to do everything to try and get this part. So I, I made a video of myself um, first. I dressed up as my drama teacher. Then I did a rap how I wanted to be, how much I wanted to be Ron. Aside from a couple of drama classes, his only prior acting experience was in a school play, but he knew getting to be in Harry Potter was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. No mixing potions you don't know how to do. I'm the biggest Harry Potter fan, and to have a Harry Potter film was just like a, just a dream role. Why was it that you wanted so badly to play Ron Weasley? I mean, what was it? Most kids, I would think, having read the book, would want to play Harry Potter. Yeah, I wanted to be Ron because he was my favorite character. And he tries to be brave, but the truth is he's not very brave. And that, that, that's what I like about him. Meanwhile, an equally inexperienced yet enthusiastic young actress, 11-year-old Emma Watson, auditioned for the role of that nimble know-it-all, Hermione Granger. I never thought I'd get the part. There are some other girls who'd been in loads of other films and stuff. They knew exactly what they were doing. And I was, I just... I thought I'd done really badly. Emma remembers not feeling any better about her chances when a stern-looking Chris Columbus called both her and Rupert into his office. We sat down. Chris looked at me very seriously, you know. I'd just like to tell you both that you've got a part. And we both stood there, stunned for a minute, just looking blankly at them both. Go on, go on. Together, Emma and Rupert, or if you prefer, Hermione and Ron, began the adventure of a lifetime one that promises to change their young lives forever. Rupert, this must be a little weird. I mean, you go mm. from being a normal kid to, frankly, a pretty big-time movie star. I mean, mm. how has it been? How are you dealing with the transition? Um, it's kind of weird. 
recently I just got back to school and saw my friends. Um, they were really cool about it. They, they acted like I, I was just like a normal kid and I just came back from school. And Rupert says he's treated no differently at home either, where, as he likes to point out, he's got five siblings, just like his character Ron. We're done for. Oh, we're over. Emma Watson, on the other hand, is quick to reveal she's nothing like her on-screen persona. Yuck. It's Levi Osa. We're complete opposites, totally. I'm not a book woman. She is. She's obsessed with, know, with reading books and stuff. I'm not. She likes being indoors. I like being outdoors. She wears nerdy clothes. I'm obsessed with fashion. She's bossy. She's horrible. I hate her. <laughs> Easy girl, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Very interesting candy. Speaking of getting fed, seems Rupert has a sweet tooth. Definitely. Just yeah. like Ron Weasley. You love sweets? Yeah, and especially these. In this case, sweets from the swamp. Chocolate frogs, Chocolate right? Chocolate frogs, yeah. So these are your favorites, right? Rupert introduced me to the treats every growing wizard needs. Pumpkin pasties, licorice wands, the brilliant cauldron cakes, <laughs> and a dentist's best friend. What are these? Bertie Bott's Every Flavor Beans. We're talking every flavor they bean, are every aren't we? Flavor, yeah. What kind of flavors do they have? Buttered toast, bogey, vomit. <laughs> vomit? Yeah. What's bogey? Booger. Booger. Yeah. Isn't <laughs> that sort of the British way of saying booger? Yeah. Could this be butter toast? No, that could be earwax. Ew! <laughs> that is so disgusting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rupert. Black pepper. Woo! That has quite a kick. This, you say, is the... Uh... Yeah. Would you eat it? <laughs> it's just disgusting. I can't even explain what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to wash it down with a vomit? <laughs> it's amazing how quickly I'd lost my appetite. Besides, I already had butterflies in my stomach. In Hollywood, of course, it's all about who you know. And if anyone was going to be able to get me an audience with the famous Harry Potter, it would have to be his best friend, Ron. Can you introduce me to Harry himself, the big guy? Oh, yeah, I can, yeah. Yeah, where is well, he? He's in his dorm. Okay, let's go see him. Thousands were in the running, but only one got the part. For the very first time, meet the boy who would be Harry Potter. Our exclusive interview with Daniel Radcliffe when we return. Earlier, Ron Weasley showed me his pet rat, Scabbers. Yeah. But you also have your own sidekick, right? Yes. Oh, voila. And here he is. Yeah. <laughs> 